The inter-American system of human rights protection is the oldest and it's therefore only fair to address it first when it comes to regional human rights systems. In this first clip I would like to give an overview of the legal framework and how the various instruments and bodies relate to one another as well as an introduction to the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights and in the next clip I then discuss the Inter-American Court of Human Rights and specifically also some of the challenges that this system is currently facing. One of the difficulties that one has when trying to understand the inter-American human rights protection system is that it consists of kind of strange dualities. On the one hand it has two human rights instruments and on the other hand it also has basically two human rights institutions. And it's not always obvious which institution is dealing with which instrument, how the instruments relate to one another and the various bodies to one another. So that's what I would like to clarify in this first clip. Now obviously the starting point should be the Charter of the Organization of American States or short OAS which was passed in April 1948. Very much being a child of its time this organization has as its goals the promotion of peace and security, democracy but also very importantly and very prominently of course the protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms which is why only a few days later on 2nd of May 1948 the American Declaration on the Rights and Duties of Man was passed by the same state assembly. Now the OAS Charter mentions human rights but does not actually elaborate on them and in this sense the whole constellation is a little bit similar or comparable to the UN Charter system where we have the UN Charter which mentions human rights but then it's the Universal Declaration which as a non-legally binding instrument elaborate on what these mean more concretely. Similarly the OAS Charter mentions human rights but it's really the American Declaration which elaborates and provides an authoritative interpretation of what these rights very concretely entail. In 1967 the OAS Charter was amended by the Protocol of Buenos Aires which is very important because it creates the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. At that time when it was originally created it was not yet able to receive and review any individual communications. This of course changed only two years later with the adoption of the American Convention on Human Rights which both established the Inter-American Court of Human Rights to which I'll get to in the next clip and mandated or expanded the mandate of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights to most notably also include individual communications. So basically we are faced with the existence of two human rights institutions here and you may very validly ask how do they relate to one another. To put it very simply the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights receives the individual complaints, reviews them initially and tries to come to a settlement between the state party and the petitioner. If this does not work out, if in the end no settlement is reached, then the commission may, if a state party has of course ratified and accepted the jurisdiction of the Inter-American Court, submit a case to the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, which then basically reviews both the findings, the conclusions of the commission and also comes to a legally binding decision on the merits of the case. There is of course more to be said about the function and activities of each of the two bodies but I'll get to this in a second. Finally we have to consider the relation between the American Declaration on the one hand and the American Convention on the other one and as already said the American Declaration is not legally binding while the American Convention actually is the one that is the basis for, for example, individual complaints procedures. How it turns out to work in practice effectively is that both the Commission and the Court consider the Declaration to be informative of what is contained in the various provisions of the Convention. So when interpreting these provisions, when interpreting the rights in the Convention, they are using the Declaration as a sort of background interpretative tool. A few words then on the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, which is a very important organ 
in this overall system. Consisting of seven commissioners, the first function, of course, is to generally monitor the human rights situation on the continents, more specifically through country reports, which are not cyclical like in the UN system, but more a response to an urgent crisis, to an immediate situation, but also thematic reports on particular types of rights or particular issues that are then issued in order to clarify the obligations that state parties have, either under the charter-based system of the American Declaration and or under the American Convention on Human Rights. Note here that these functions, as well as one type of individual procedures, derive basically from the charter system, so from the OAS charter and from the American Declaration on the Rights and Duties of Man, which is distinct, so the Inter-American Commission plays a somewhat separate or different role under the convention. And this is often a source of confusion, but as long as you remember that the American convention comes with the Inter-American Court of Human Rights and that cases can therefore be referred to the court, you should be able to understand what the difference between those two is. This then brings us to the function that the commission plays under the convention. As already said, it receives and reviews the individual communication that it receives under the ACHR. And on page 433, the textbook quite nicely illustrates the precise procedural steps that are involved in these proceedings. After it has reviewed a communication, it comes to the conclusion whether there has been a violation of the convention and it also adopts recommendations to the state parties on how to respond to this finding. Now, in most cases, compliance will not be immediate and the additional step then will be taken to go before the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. And this, in fact, has been the case since 2001. In all cases, unless the Commission very specifically and for very specific reasons decides not to take this step, but that's very rarely the case. Once the individual communication then reaches the court, the commission is not totally out of the picture. In fact, it continues to be involved in the proceedings in a so-called ministerial publico capacity, which means that it is basically an amicus curiae of sorts or a party that provides and protects the integrity of the legal system of the Inter-American Human Rights Protection System as a whole. Last but not least, the Inter-American Commission can receive and review interstate complaints, which basically one state party launches against another state party. That being said, interstate procedures are generally very rare in the international system, and this particular interstate proceeding before the American Commission of Human Rights is not an exception here. I want to end this clip by briefly addressing the reading question that I gave you comparing the American Commission on Human Rights to the UN Human Rights Committee. And although there are some differences between the two bodies, they do not mostly relate to the functions, which is what I was interested in in this question. Indeed, the two are relatively comparable. Both of them issue reports on state parties, though in the Inter-American Commission's context, mostly when it comes to alarming, urgent situations that require attention. They also monitor generally the human rights compliance in the system. They also issue um, recommendations and clarifications regarding the scope and content of the human rights provisions that exist. They also receive individual communications. They also, in these specific cases, can issue interim measures, precautionary measures to avoid irreparable harm. The major difference is, of course, that unlike the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, the Human Rights Committee does not have the chance to refer a case to a human rights court. No human rights court exists at the UN level, which also means that the Human Rights Committee does not perform the ministerial publico function like the Inter-American Commission does before the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. This concludes this video. I'll now move on to talk about the Inter-American Court of Human Rights and the challenges that this system faces.